Welcome to our Good Friday devotional time. I pray that your week so far has gone well and that each of you is as safe as you can make yourself. I also want to add that if any of you needs prayer or just needs somebody to talk to you about what you're going through, um, feel free to contact me. Um, if you'll get a pen and paper ready, I'll give you my email and phone number. Um, at the end of this message, and then again at the end of the song. And uh, whether you're a part of our congregation or not, feel free to call me or, or email me if you just want someone to talk to, if you want someone to pray over the phone with you. Remember, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. It doesn't matter the shape of our cross, right? It's Christ that we live through. The scripture I want to talk about this morning is from the book of John, chapter 19, verses 28 to 30. And it says, Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I'm thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus says, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Have you ever noticed that some of the greatest and most powerful statements ever spoken are short? John F. Kennedy back in the 60s asked, or said rather, Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And, and there's a lot implied and carried in that little statement. Uh, Winston Churchill was uh, the Prime Minister of England during World War II, uh, during the really dark days when it wasn't certain whether England would survive or not. And the words he said were, we have nothing to fear, but fear itself. Again, a very powerful statement in just a few words. Now, obviously, these are not the only words of wisdom that these words ever spoke, excuse me, these people ever spoke. Uh, there were a lot of things they said that were worthy of uh, remembering. Uh, but they're certainly compact and they're powerful. Now, we could spend years talking about the wisdom that our Savior spoke of when he was here on earth with us. But there are no more powerful words ever spoken than the three words found in verse 30 of today's scripture. It is finished. It's just three short words, 12 total letters. And yet they changed the world forever. It is finished. For thousands of years before Christ came, humanity had been struggling since our sin in the Garden of Eden, right? Since Adam and Eve disobeyed God and were kicked out. And, and on our own, we're doomed to fail in overcoming that sin. We just can't do it. We could never and never will be able to fulfill the law, the rules, right? Without God's help, we're doomed. But God had a plan, and that plan was Jesus. Christ came down to earth. He laid aside his Godhead, his power, his prestige, his position, and he lived as a human. He suffered as we all do. He knew thirst. He knew pain. He knew tiredness. He knew anxiety, right? He knew all these things. And he was as tempted as we are as well. And yet he was free from the curse of sin. And because of that, finally the price could be paid to redeem our lost souls. Now, as Jesus hung there on the cross, Bearing the punishment for our sins, he became sin. If you remember, Jesus said on the cross, Father, why have you uh, abandoned me? 
He took into his body the sins of humanity for all times, the, the sins that have been co uh, committed before this time and the sins after. And remember, God, God cannot be in the presence of sin. And, and those sins were just about to die with him when he spoke these words. And, and that is what Jesus was talking about when he said, it is finished. He had sent to be the scapegoat for us. If you read some of the Old Testament um, uh, in Numbers and Deuteronomy especially, there are places where animals take the, the punishment for our sins. And a scapegoat is one where the priest would lay his hands on the, on the goat's head and, and the sins would, would flow into the goat and it would be sent out in the wilderness. So a scapegoat is a person or something who is blamed for the wrongdoings, mistakes, or faults of other people. And that was our Savior. He took the blame. He took the punishment. Now things looked pretty bleak on that day. At the Last Supper, just the night before, Jesus had told the disciples that one of his own would betray him. And Judas did. And now, this Jesus, the, the, the man who had lived with them and led them and mentored them for three years daily, he's now been captured, betrayed by Judas, beaten and crucified and hanging on the cross, he's about to die. In human terms, can you imagine a worse situation? Right? T taken from a human perspective, how could we overcome that? The disciples felt lost and hopeless, just as we can on some days. Now, we don't have to be under a pandemic stay-home order to feel lost at some times, do we? <clears throat> there are lots of reasons that we can feel down or overwhelmed. Um, and I'm not going to take the time to go into them now, but as you're hearing this, I'm sure that the memories or, or uh, understanding is flashing through your minds. But take heart. It's finished. Jesus completed his mission of providing us a way past our sins. John 16, 33. Jesus says, I've told you these things so that in me you can have peace. <clears throat> Excuse me. He says, in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, he says, I have overcome the world. So as you go about today, whether you're one of those who is still essential and is out working, or whether you're home with your family, or if, if you're one of those who, who has to endure this, this separation and isolation alone. Remember that Jesus has overcome the world. He has overcome your sin. There is no sin that you have ever committed that Christ didn't die for. He has overcome our human nature. Through his sacrifice on the cross, we are considered worthy of heaven. This is, is indeed a good Friday when we remember that. It is finished. Let's pray. And then remember, I'm going to, uh, to give you my phone and an email. And then we'll have a, a, a worship song. And then I'll make sure my information is available again following the worship song. And uh, if you know somebody who just needs somebody to, to talk to, give them this information and call me. Uh, it doesn't matter what church they belong to. I'm not trying to take someone from one congregation uh, into mine. I simply want to, to help our brothers and sisters in Christ during this time. Let's pray. Father God, um, we go through uh, dark times in our lives. Um, sometimes we're all our own worst enemies. We, we know we've done things that are wrong, things that are, are, are against your desires. Uh, we, we've not followed you. We've not loved you. We've not loved others. But Lord, you are the answer to all of that. 
not only did you you uh, you pay the price on Calvary, Lord, but you paid the price for every sin, all times. You paid the price. It's finished, Lord. The 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 cure is there. The way to overcome that sin is on the table for us to pick up. And Father, as we go through these next few weeks, that are still going to be hard. I just pray, Father, that we, we keep this in mind. No matter what it is we're going through, you have paid the price, and we are redeemed. In Jesus' holy name, amen. How deep the Father's love for us how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the Father turns his face away As wounds which mar the chosen one Bring many sons to glory Yeah. 